I used to spend a few days each month skimming legal jargon like this until I built an AI automation to do it for me. Stick around to see my exact process for building effective automations like this and how I cut that time into just a few minutes. Faster workflows, fewer mistakes, happier clients. By the end of this video, you will have a repeatable framework that you can apply to any automation project. We're going to approach this video using a process that I recently automated so that you can see the framework in action in a real world scenario. Part of being a content creator with multiple brand partners means that you sign multiple agreements at the same time. And when I've got contracts that include things like exclusivity clauses, I need to keep track of these terms to make sure that things don't clash. Previously, I used to review the documents manually and then make notes of the terms to keep track, but I think we can do better. So let's get started. Step one, define the win. Automations only succeed when the goal is crystal clear. I use the three W's. What is the desired output? For me, this is a faster, more organized method of contract summarization. Yeah, it sounds boring. When should it run? The moment that I sign a deal. And why automate? Well, manually doing this process, I was chewing through a minimum of two days of my time per month. So I'd like to see if it can be done a little bit faster. Step two, map the current process. Before you build, you need to walk through the pain yourself. Time yourself doing the task once, and if it doesn't hurt that much, maybe skip automating it. You don't wanna waste your time. But if it does, create a diagram of every step in the process. In my example, I received the signed document back from the client. I read through the document, make notes of key terms such as payment amounts and exclusivity clauses, and then I add these to my Notion dashboard. Once we've got these down, we'll look at step three, design the future. Now it's time to pick your toolbox. Do some research on the different tools that you can use to replace the steps that you identified in the last step. My recommendation is to always shortlist at least two options for each step so that you can get an idea of pricing and how these functionalities compare. Here's a few examples of tools that I could use for my workflow. If you can't find any viable or quick options to set up your workflow, consider splitting up the process into multiple automations with a human in the loop step. This will make it far easier for you to get up and running with automating a process, and then you can worry about filling in the gaps later. Step four, prototype and or validate. If you're able to, you need to do at least one of these two things. Build a quick demo version. I'd usually recommend to do this if your process is really complicated with lots of different components. Or if your process is a little bit less complicated like mine is, I'd recommend testing each of the tools that are going to make up your automation. In my case, I use Postman to test the two APIs that I'm using in the project to make sure that they produce the desired outputs that can fit together with my automation. Step five, build, test, deploy. Now it's time to build your automation. You can do this using any tool that you want to. It does not matter if it's low code, no code, pro code, it's whatever works best for you. I decided to build mine using Python and host the code on AWS. Here's a quick walkthrough of the code. So the Python project itself is made up of three main functions. It's made up of the receive email function, the process upload function, and the contract processor. These are all defined inside of an AWS SAM template, which you can go and download from GitHub and take a look at how this is specifically structured. The receive email function is going to handle raw email documents that are uploaded to the first AWS bucket by AWS SES. So this is going to be triggered when we send an email containing our PDF attachment. And essentially this function is going to be used to get the file data from the S3, uh, the S3 bucket. It's then going to convert it into a raw email, pass the bytes, get the sender to basically make sure that the sender is actually valid and we are sending from a domain that is allowed to um, to process contracts. Otherwise, anyone could send an email to my uh, to my inbox for this function and then process contracts on my behalf, which of, of course I wouldn't want. So that's what that does. If we just skip past that, we can see here that we are now passing the attachments. And what this is going to do is check to see how many attachments there are and then loop through all of them to turn them into an actual PDF document and upload them to S3 for the next function to handle. Next, we have the process upload function, which is going to be triggered every single time a PDF attachment is uploaded to the second AWS S3 bucket. And this is going to essentially take that PDF content and send it to the Abbey API, which is what we're using to pass the text in a PDF document. You can see that it's getting the bucket information right here. It's then getting the object URL um, from S3, and then it's sending that object URL to Abby right here. And once it's done that, it's going to take the document ID from Abby and it's going to add it to our DynamoDB table so that we can check in the future 
um, to see if that document has finished processing. Okay, so now we're on to the contract processor function, which is going to be triggered every five minutes to check to see if any documents have finished processing by Abby. And the reason that we're doing this every five minutes is because Abby doesn't have a webhook that's going to tell us when the documents have finished processing. So this is the next best thing. You can see here that we're scanning the table to check for documents that are still processing. We're then going to loop through each of these documents and ask Abby if it has finished processing the documents. If it has, we're going to concatenate the extracted texts, um, which will essentially turn it from the JSON summary that Abby returns into actual readable text. You can see that function right here. And then we're going to get the contract parameters using an LLM call, which you can see defined here. This is quite a long prompt, so if you do want to check it out for yourself, you can click the link in the description to go to this GitHub repository. And then finally, we're going to delete the pending documents from the S3 bucket and also from the DynamoDB table to make sure that we don't try and request information on this document again. I hope that wasn't too confusing, but if it was, you can go to GitHub and have a look at this repository for yourself, clone the code and even use it yourself if you want to. Now, before you deploy your automation, you want to test it using multiple different triggers. For our contract automation, we could do this by maybe providing it with three different contracts or with slightly different structures and wordings to them. And if everything works, we can deploy it to production and start using it for real. And if not, of course, you need to fix those bugs. And that's how you build an effective automation. You can download the code for my contracts automation by clicking the link in the description. And thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.